Bipartisan Violence Against Women Act united our communities and our country in the fight against domestic violence in America. Today, we are honored to be with advocates and survivors to introduce a bipartisan, common-sense VAWA reauthorization that builds, builds on this progress and saves lives. Uh, the original co uh, two of the co-sponsors, Rep Representative Karen Bass and Representative Brian Kirkpatrick, will be hearing from. Thank you for the bipartisanship of it all. Uh, and many champions in Congress, including Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, sure. Sheila went there, who has worked so hard on this issue for such a very long time. Thank you, Sheila Jackson Lee, for your leadership. Uh, we are pleased that this bill is being introduced, as I said, on a bipartisan basis. There should be nothing partisan about po or political about ending the scourge of domestic violence and the sexual assault, which one in three women face today, one in three women. We hope to receive more bipartisan support as the bill moves forward. The bill preserves the vital progress that was made in the 2013 reauthorization to protect the LGBTQ community, Native American community, and immigrant women. That was part of the fight. We, we couldn't get the bill to the floor because there was resistance to protect immigrant, LGBTQ, and Native American women. But then we did a bipartisan bill in the Senate and, and then our bill in the House, and that brought a success. And it, President Obama signed that and, in the presence of many from those communities. And it builds on the progress with life-saving updates that reflect the voices of survivors and the input of experts, some of whom we'll hear from today. With this bill, we are empowering law enforcement and helping stop abusers and stalkers from obtaining firearms. We are supporting survivors with protections against discrimination in the workplace and unjust evictions. And we are strengthening protections, again, for Native American women because every woman everywhere has the right to live free from abuse. We urge all members to join us in strong bipartisan support for this bill. And now it is my privilege to... Uh, he was there 25 years ago when we passed the bill in the House then. Some of us were involved with funding the legislation following that, and that, uh, that continues. But uh, now we have a champion for the bill who is the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, uh, Congressman Jerry Nadler. Thank you. In 1994, I was a member of the Judiciary Committee, a freshman when we first passed VAWA. Thank you all for being here to support the introduction of the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act of 2019. I want to thank the people who made today a reality, particularly the many victims, survivors, and advocates, including those with us here today, who have supported us in bringing VAWA 2019 to fruition. My colleagues and I, under the leadership of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, stand ready to work on your behalf to protect and enhance this indispensable, indispensable law. I want to thank Ms. Bass and Mr. Fitzpatrick for their leadership in this bipartisan effort to introduce this bill. And I want to thank Ms. Jackson Lee for her long-standing and tireless efforts over the years to protect and strengthen the Violence Against Women Act. When VAWA was first enacted in 1994, it was all too common for violent crimes against women to go without, proper, without appropriate response and to remain unaddressed by the criminal justice system. With the enactment of VAWA, Congress began to take seriously its role in ensuring that communities across America have the tools they need to combat the crimes of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking. Victims, survivors, and the communities where they live have relied on Congress to help provide the resources needed to prevent, investigate, and prosecute these crimes and to assist survivors. Unfortunately, these programs and resources are still necessary. Every year, Approximately 7.9 million women experience the crimes of rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner. And an average of three women are killed every single day by a current or former intimate partner. These are chilling statistics, and much still remains to be done. VAWA has been reauthorized three times before, in 2000, in 2005, and 2013, on a bipartisan basis. And we are here today on a bipartisan basis to reauthorize VAWA again. But this bill is more than just a mere reauthorization. The bill strengthens and improves the current law in many respects. Among other things, it expands the permissible use of grant monies focused on increasing survivor, law enforcement, and community safety. 
It improves services for victims. It dedicates considerable resources to prevention and training efforts. It enhances and improves responses to violence in a variety of areas, including in the healthcare sector and the housing sector. And it helps protect Native American women by enhancing tribal criminal jurisdiction, tribal criminal jurisdiction over certain types of crimes. It is quite fitting that we are introducing VAWA 2019 during Women's History Month and on the eve of International Women's Day. We must support VAWA and the many people who will benefit from it. In the coming weeks, the Judiciary Committee will mark up VAWA 2019. We had a hearing on it today. We'll be marking it up probably next week, and we will debate it on the floor of the House. I encourage all of my colleagues to support it, as I will, as I know everyone here will, every step of the way. Thank you, and I yield. I'm, I'm glad to yield now to the to the uh, chairperson of the Crime Subcommittee of the Judiciary, uh, Representative Bass. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Madam Speaker, for your incredible leadership in this issue and of our House. Today is a very important day for survivors everywhere. We are here to follow through on the pledge we made to the American people when we said we would deliver in the 116th Congress. We said reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act was a priority in the first 100 days of this Congress, and today we are keeping our word by introducing the Bipartisan Violence Against Women Act of 2019. I welcome my co-sponsor, Mr. Fitzpatrick, who joins me in introducing this monumental piece of legislation the VAWA Act of 2019 that builds upon the amazing progress made under the leadership of my colleague, Congresswoman Jackson Lee, in the last Congress. This year, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of VAWA, and on this very day, March 7th, President Barack Obama signed our last VAWA reauthorization in 2013. And today, on the sixth anniversary of VAWA's last passage, we are holding this press conference to address the urgency of now in reauthorizing this vital legislation. For centuries, women have fought vigorously to demand changes in our federal laws, not simply for their own benefit, but for others as well. VAWA is no exception in that regard. Women have stood up for themselves, for men, and for their children, and have said no more. Join me in welcoming Regina Malvo, CEO of the, w y of the YWCA in Spokane, Washington. Good afternoon. Uh, as um, Representative Bass indicated, my name is Regina Malvo. I'm a survivor. I'm the CEO of the YWCA Spokane and a proud board member at the YWCA uh, USA. I'm here today with my colleagues from across the country, uh, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, another colleague from Washington State, and we're here representing 220 YWCAs across the country, really to implore Congress um, to reauthorize VAWA. It's critical and authorizing it at the full funding level is um, equally as important. The YWCA serves over a half million women, girls, and families uh, with domestic violence uh, victim service support. Uh, in Spokane, we serve over 17,000. Spokane, Washington is a population of about 400,000, and our organization serves 17,000 uh, women and children uh, with support services, including shelter, counseling, and legal services. That gives you some sense of the gravity of the problem. And even so, um, our funding um, authorized by VAWA only allows us to serve one-third uh, of the victims who come seeking legal services. So we're required to turn two-thirds of those victims away based on um, our attorney capacity compared to uh, the demand. And um, one example of a client who benefits from uh, VAWA and the services provided under it uh, was Jill, who was a survivor uh, living in our shelter after receiving a protection order and support with uh, assistance with a parenting plan to keep uh, her children from having to um, spend um, regular time with the perpetrator. Too often the family uh, law system is manipulated by perpetrators and uh, victim and children continue to be victimized. Uh, when I spoke with Jill, um, she told me, I will never forget what the YWCA did for us and how important you were to our survival. 
Again, it's imperative uh, for Congress to pass a strong VAWA bill now and to commit to fully funding uh, these critical services, which we absolutely know are saving lives. And I'd like to now turn the podium over to Representative um, Fitzpatrick, and thank you for your leadership. again to Representative Bass and Representative Jackson. We both have put uh, a lot of work into getting this bill prepared for, uh, for introduction. Um, and I speak to you not just uh, as a member of Congress, but um, as a 14-year FBI agent who's seen the horrific nature of these crimes and also who spent a lot of time in the area of victim advocacy. Uh, this piece of legislation, I can assure you, is very, very important to the law enforcement communities across this country, federal, state, and local. An average of 20 people experience intimate partner physical violence every minute in the United States and the Violence Against Women Act has drastically improved our nation's response to safeguarding women and children from abuse and anguish. And the Violence Against Women Act has helped prevent victimization and has helped survivors and their families get the resources they need to begin the healing process. The Violence Against Women Act programs are the key in building awareness of domestic and sexual abuse, improving services and support for victims and enhancing law enforcement training and response. And Congress's failure to reauthorize this critical legislation jeopardize the resources that millions of Americans rely on. This, reauthorizes, uh, this reauthorization provides needed services for young people by working to combat bullying, educating youth on how to prevent violence, and helping children exposed to violence. And we must also engage men in preventing violence. And this legislation reauthorizes the SMART Prevent Program which will help do just that and works to reduce dating violence. I'm glad that the Combat Eyeline Predators Act, which was my legislation uh, from last cycle, uh, was included, which will ensure that not only are we increasing penalties for cyber stalking, uh, especially against women and minors, but we are also requiring federal law enforcement officials to constantly evaluate and update practices to go combat online harassment and cyberbullying. Uh, in Bucks County, a woman's place, provides housing for women and families who are in life-threatening uh, conditions, and this reauthorization increases the protections for survivors and ensures that they have the necessary protections to live without fear. And today I'm joined with two incredible partners from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Jen Hines, who is the Director uh, of Advocacy and Outreach for Women's Place, Bucks County's only domestic violence agency, serving survivors of domestic violence for 42 years, and Pe Penny Ettinger, who is the Executive Director of Network of Victim Assistance, also known as NOVA. NOVA is a rape crisis and comprehensive crime victim service. I encourage this Congress to move forward with the reauthorization of VAWA. I would now like to turn this over to Petty, Penny Ettinger. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Congressman Fitzpatrick. Speaker Pelosi, Chairman Nadler, and other members of Congress for your invitation to speak. This is uh, quite an honor to express what we do in the community with VAWA funds. Uh, NOVA is the comprehensive victim service organization in Bucks County, providing services to over 3,600 victims each year, many who are victims of sexual assault, human trafficking, stalking, and other serious crimes. Our organization receives critical funding under VAWA, including STOP and the Sexual Assault Services Formula Grant Program, otherwise known as SASP, and the Rape Prevention Education Program. Um, funds, <coughs> excuse me, funds support a variety of services, including a model sexual assault nurse examiner program providing specialized health services and evidence collection for sexual assault victims in four of our six hospitals in the county. The RPE funds, or the Rape Prevention Education Funds, that NOVA receives for prevention education provide significant financial support to expand primary prevention programs that are key to preventing child sexual abuse preventing sexual assault, and violence against women, girls, and minorities. VAWA funds are the sole public source for our sexual assault prevention education programs for children, youth, and college students. However, the demand from schools and community has increased dramatically with the Me Too movement. 
So we are ever looking to expand those programs. If our country is going to have a, significantly, a significant decrease in the number of sexual assaults among the next generation, then funds for VAWA must be available to provide for the development and implementation of age-appropriate evidence-based programs that are culturally appropriate and promote healthy attitudes and behaviors. I will now turn the floor over to, to Congressman Representative Wood. Debbie Wood. Dingle. Oh. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for being here this afternoon, and I really do want to thank Speaker Pelosi, Jerry Nadler, Karen Bass, Sheila Jackson Lee, but more importantly, all of my colleagues, men and women, who stand behind me in a bipartisan way. Uh, to fight violence against women. We desperately need to reauthorize this act. I spend, a, as you can imagine, I spend a lot of time with these groups, and they're really scared. I was at Safe House in my own district, and they don't know how they're going to continue programs. And unfortunately, instead of there being less need since this bill was originally passed, there's more need. No woman child or man should fear for their life because of domestic violence. And without the updates and support of the critical programs in VAWA, we're moving backwards. Good pro programs helping victims are worried that they're going to disappear. And I want you to think about, you've heard these wonderful women who are out there helping others, that it's one more stress point on top of all of the other stress when they're trying to help people. So today you've already heard the powerful stories from actual people who rely on the VAWA uh, programs, and you've heard from my colleagues on the top lines of what the bill does. So I want to talk about two specific ones that people don't think about as often as they should. One, a bill that I introduced last year is now part of this, zero tolerance for domestic abusers. You heard me talk on the floor last week. This bipartisan bill, and it really is important to acknowledge that this is bipartisan, closes loopholes that make it easy. Right now, people don't understand how easy it is for perpetrators of dating violence and those convicted to still get a gun. People with a history of domestic violence shouldn't have access to guns. 76% of the women murdered by a current or former intimate partner experience stalking in the last year of their life. Think about that. Closing loopholes that allow stalkers to have access to guns saves lives, period. And then we have the VAWA health provision. The health provisions in this bill strengthen the health care system's identification, assessment, and response to survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and dating violence. Studies show a strong correlation between those receiving mental health and substance abuse services and the likelihood of domestic abuse as the root cause. Provisions in this bill bring together our way too fragmented mental health and domestic violence systems so we can actually serve the survivors. There's no reason a survivor should face hurdles when trying to connect with the services they need to recover. VAWA is a bipartisan effort. We need to reauthorize this bill. Men, women, and children are counting on us. And did Porter, Representative Porter. Porter, my colleague. I'm honored to be here today to help introduce this vital legislation. Like millions of others, I suffered domestic violence. So I understand all too well how important it is for women, men, and children in America to have trained people to turn to during some of the scariest moments of their lives. This legislation will provide the resources to train local police and first responders to respond appropriately. The first time I called for help, the officer who arrived told me that if I called for protection again, my children would be taken away from me. So 
each year millions suffer in silence for fear that getting help will result in their being blamed. I waited weeks, but I did have to call for help again. And when I did, it was a huge difference. The officer who arrived told me I was brave. He told me I could survive. He told me he would help me. And he protected my kids, me, and my husband, and helped us all get the help that we needed. That is what this legislation is about. It's about making sure when men and women and children around this country call for help, those that arrive on the scene know what to do and are willing to do it. I apologize for my tears. <laughs> And today, Katie Porter is a new member of the House of Representatives. Today, you've heard from the Speaker of the House, the Chairman of the Committee. You've heard from survivors. You've heard from activists. You've heard from other members of Congress. Representative Gwen Moore, who has been a leader on this issue, is coming up right now. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Karen uncle. Bass. Just let me tell you how great it is to have all of you convene here for this important piece of legislation that has an impact on uh, women and some men, uh, both parties, uh, every race, creed, color. I want to thank Speaker Pelosi and Chairman Nadler for uh, having me be here today to speak on the reauthorization of the violence against Women Act. And I also want to welcome and invoke the spirit of Louise McIntosh Slaughter, who uh, was the original sponsor of this legislation. And as many of you know, VAWA means a lot to me personally. And I'm just one of the millions of women and men who've experienced domestic violence uh, in their lives, and I'm just one too many. Uh, but I'm not alone because we got a community behind us, a family of men and women who believe that sexual violence has no place in our communities. We stand together to expand, enhance, and pass legislation that will save lives. But VAWA is not the ceiling that we shall reach. It is the floor from which we have to work from now. This reauthorization is just the beginning where we will say time's up to the scourge of domestic violence. I just can't wait until we just work our, our way out of this problem. And our future generations will say, really? Was that ever a problem? It's like polio or something. It's going to be rare. Uh, but I want to thank our dear friend, uh, Chairwoman Bass and, and, and Congressman uh, Fitzpatrick, this is a bipartisan initiative uh, who've included critical provisions that address the disproportionate domestic violence and sexual violence faced by indigenous women. This has really been a hurdle that we've worked on for a couple of, of cycles, and I'm excited to partner with my colleagues to work on these issues and carpe diem, let's take advantage of this momentum and let's get this thing done. <laughs> Let me just thank all of the activists and the advocate organizations for your hundreds of hours, your months, your years of working on this reauthorization. This concludes the press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.